thank you very much for the introduction and thank you for the invitation to this amazing place. It's a big pleasure and honor, honor to speak here. Uh, I will tell you about a large class, some mostly conjectures about a large class of vertex related algebras that are associated to divisors in Calabria freefolds. And compared to the basically all the talks I've given on the topic during the past two years, where I took one perspective out of the three known perspectives that I have at this point, Today I've decided to include all of them in a single lecture, which means that it, uh, I, can, I have to skip basically all the details and all the technicalities, uh, but hopefully it still will be understandable. And if not, please feel free to ask me afterwards, after the lecture. <coughs> I should also mention that uh, what I'm going to talk about is mostly, um, is, is, going, is going to be mostly the work I've done with uh, David Gajoto, Tomáš Procházka, Jan Sojblman, Japing Yang, and Gupang Zhao. And let me start right away with the introduction. So my point of view on vertex separated algebras is going to be very algebraic and physics, uh, physics-y. And roughly the vertex separated algebras are extensions of the Virasoro algebra generated by the modes of the stress energy tensor Ln with the following commutation relations. Centrally extended by the following term. And the extension is by some fields, by s modes of some other fields, where alpha labels the fields and n is an integer labeling the, no the, the mode. I don't have time to uh, review all the definitions of the vertex operator algebras, but uh, I think this is going to be sufficient for, uh, for this talk. <coughs> and for a physicist, a vertex separated algebra is roughly the symmetry algebra of 2D CFTs. <coughs> Since I'm a physicist, I'm going to uh, start with a physical picture that I have in mind when talking about the vertex separated algebras. And the physical picture uh, to which I'm going to associate the vertex separated algebra is the following configuration. I will consider M theory, which is an 11 dimensional theory on, let's say, T star times sigma, where sigma is Riemann surface, on which the vertex separated algebra is going to live, or the 2D CFT is going to live, times a Calabria freefold. And M theory contains M fibrains, and I will consider and five brains. <coughs> oh, and there's extra, let's say, circle. Uh, the M5 brains are going to be supported on sigma inside the T star sigma, and D inside the Calabria freefold, which is a divisor. What do I mean by that? I mean that we have this Riemann surface, and we have N1, M5 brains uh, wrapping one for cycle inside the Calabria freefold, possibly some other M5 brains, and let's say N2 of them wrapping another four cycle, where each of the four cycles correspond to different smooth components of the, of the divisor. So this is the configuration, and in the same way as uh, using the same motivation as uh, the AGT as, as used for in the, in the paper of Alda Gato and Tachikawa, who associated a vertex separated algebra to uh, gauge theory on C, C, C2. One can consider compactification of the setup on D to get some two dimensional theory living on the Riemann surface. This is a subclass of local operators. 
uh, giving rise to a vertex operator algebra that I label as V O A D. <coughs> uh, similarly, as in the res recent paper of, of Gukov, who studies very similar uh, configurations. But the vertex operator algebras associated to a given divisors uh, to a given divisor have been identified only for a limited class of uh, of such divisors, basically only. C2 or resol um, resolutions of C2 mod ZK. And today. So it's a device in, in, in Calabria of threefold, so. That's right. So we said a device in C2. Uh, oh no, I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, right. So the two examples uh, appearing in the literature are. Uh, the following example. Where the corresponding vertex operator algebra can be identified with WN algebra, or the following di divisor, where we have N M5 brains on C2 mod ZK resolution inside C2 mod ZK times C, where the corresponding vertex operator algebra is some extension of Katsumudi uh, GL. GLK hat at level uh, uh, N. <coughs> when you say compactification, do you mean like dimensional reduction? Uh, I guess so, yeah. So today I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you what are the vertex spread algebras, and I'm actually going to give you three different characterizations of the vertex spread algebras associated to the divisors in toric Calabria of Freefolds. So today, I will try to answer the question, what is the vertex spread algebra VOAD for Calabria of Freefold toric? Why do we even care about this question? <coughs> Let me give you three reasons. So firstly, uh, it, it is interesting from the point of view of the vertex operator algebras. It leads to interesting results in the theory of VOAs. Since one can discover new dual constructions of vertex operator algebras, one can understand uh, structure or parameterization of modules of, of interesting vertex operator algebras, or give a diagrammatic way to understand various extensions of vertex operator algebra, as we will see later. possibly many others. Secondly, the picture that I've drawn above actually points towards an, an application <coughs> and a generalization of AGT for respect instantons of Nekrasov. Uh, intuitively, what one can do, one can consider inser, instead of the compactification on the divisor D, one can compactify on the Riemann surface to get a gauge theory with, G, uh, with GLN1 and GLN2 gauge group on each of the smooth components of the divisors, mutually interacting along the, uh, along the intersection. And it turns out that there is some correspondence between uh, the vertex operator algebra on the left-hand side and the ga this gauge theory configuration on the right-hand side. And these gauge theory configurations have been recently studied in a series of papers by Nekrasov. <coughs> so, what I call by HD correspondence for spike instantons is this relation between VOAD and gauge theory on D. Uh, this, uh, this relation has very concrete uh, realizations, both in mathematics and physics, where in the math literature, people can construct 
actions of the vertex operator, natural geometric actions of the vertex operator algebras on equivariant cohomology of moduli space of instantons associated to D. Something that we have done for the simplest example uh, of where the simplest example of C3 with uh, Jan Soibelman, Ping Kang, and Gu Fang Zhao. And the physics literature, one can find statements that the conformal blocks of the, of the vertex separated algebra equal uh, the partition function, Necrasso partition function. on the other side. And the final motivation that is being explored by Davide, but I won't have time to uh, talk about, are some applications in geometric Langlands program. Since the configuration that I described for the toric calabia of free folds have actually dual description in terms of interfaces in n equals for super young mills, and uh, uh <coughs> the appearance of the vertex operator algebra then uh, gives a way how to realize the vertex operator algebras and employ the, uh, the language and the techniques of vertex operator algebras in the uh, gauge theory setup of Kapustin and Witten. Also, okay, so th this is the motivation. And let me now start with reviewing some facts about the uh, toric uh, toric labial free folds and toric diagrams. So I will think about toric uh, toric toric labial free folds as R times T two vibrations. R3. Let me describe uh, how the toric diagram, or let me describe in uh, like concretely the simplest example where the toric labial free fold is simply C3. So we have the natural coordinates Z1, Z2, Z3 on C3. And one can consider the following uh, Hamiltonian functions that give the projection to the, ba to the base. And generate the R, uh, R times T2 fiber. In particular, these uh, mu1 and mu2 generate the following uh, rotation of the, of the coordinates. Uh, e, I, D2, Z2, E minus I, D1, minus I, T2, Z3. The toric diagram is then a diagram uh, that shows the uh, the loci where one of the one of the cycles of the torus degenerate in the mu one mu two plane, and it's not hard to convince yourself that the toric diagram of the, for this C three has simply the following form with the uh, First, a cycle degenerating along this line, along this arrow. <coughs> uh, the B cycle is degenerating over, over, uh, over this line. And A plus B cycle degenerating uh, along the, the last arrow. Sorry, uh, sorry sir. what does this picture mean? So you're just drawing the lines over which you have degenerations, or is it? That's correct. Just that. That's right just the degeneration of the, of the two circles. OK, now let me tell you how to describe in these diagrams divisors. 
So the generic divisor that uh, is fixed under the historic action has only three smooth components and correspond to the three coordinate planes, uh, planes inside C3. So with the multiplicities N1, N2, and N3. <coughs> and we can see that each of these smooth components uh, map to one of the two uh, faces of the toric diagram. And one can then each of such smooth components associate to, uh, to one, of the, one of the faces. So we can specify the divisor by this colored toric diagram with N1, N2, and N3 integers associated to each of the three uh, faces. One well, can do similar things, and it turns out that any uh, toric clavier freefold can be described by some kind of toric diagram. Let's specify again the degeneration degener 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 loci of various cycles uh, <coughs> above, above the base in the mu1, mu2 plane. And instead of giving you uh, Details, let me give you a couple of examples. The first simplest example is when we glue together two, uh, two trivalent junctions, two trivalent junctions. In the diagram, each of the uh, trivalent vertices correspond to one, uh, one, C, one C3, and the, uh, the diagram describes how they are glued together, roughly. So. This diagram corresponds to the probably second simplest historic Calibre freefold, which is the resolved conifold. And one can again associate a divisor, one can again label divisor by putting integers inside, inside each of the uh, four, uh, four faces. <coughs> the second simplest example uh, containing also, also only three trivalent vertices has the following form. Let me also specify which are the cycles that degenerate along each of the arrows. And the divisor, the corresponding divisor that is fixed under toric action has again uh, for smooth components. And I can continue drawing the historic diagrams and study the corresponding uh, uh, divisors. Let me come back to the resolved conifold case, which is with the following toric, di toric diagram, because this is actually going to be the only one that I'm going to speak today uh, about. Uh, but you can do the same or similar kind of construction for other toric calabial freefolds. So just to be concrete, <laughs> uh, from now on I'm going to concentrate on the simplest trivial injunction and this simplest glue diagram corresponding to the resolved conifold. So the resolved conifold uh, has actually the form of the O1, O minus one, time O minus one bundle over P1. And the toric divisor has four smooth components, with one of them being one of the two uh, O1 bundles of P1, the other one being uh, the other bundle, O minus one bundle. then fiber over the north pole of the P1, and finally the fiber over the south pole of the P1. Okay, so that's the toric geometry that we need and the toric diagrams. And let me now describe, go to the vertex separated algebras and describe the vertex algebra vertex.
Okay, and I'm actually going to give you three conjectural equivalent definitions of the algebra. I'm sorry, so what is the connection between this discussion of diagrams and what you're doing now? Well, I'm just, uh, right now I'm going to, okay. Uh, I'm going to associate vertex separated algebra to each such diagram. Throughout this talk, uh, I'm not going to describe what is the relation between the geometry and the vertex separated algebras. I'm going to define them in terms of formulas and I'm going to give you three different definitions. So I will associate three different definitions to each of such, such diagrams. And conjecturally, these uh, vertex separated algebras that I'm going to define are going to be those that appear in this generalized AGT from an action of some algebras on equivalent cohomology on, on the moduli spaces. So, 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 so you're not just going to do it for the resolved quantifold, fold, but you're going to do it just for any diagram. Uh, I mean, well, that's just an example for it. Right? That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. The, everything should work for arbitrary toric diagram. But I'm going to write down explicit expressions only for the toric, uh, for only for the uh, resolved quantifold. And so to get the ordinary AGT to which mm -hmm. case, your speci uh, specialization to which case you need to do? So, so by, by, uh, by AGT, I don't mean the duration with the partition function on S4, but by, by AGT, I mean the, the chiral part, the yes. duration, uh, the, the C2. And it's, it's relatively easy, right? Uh, because, sorry? C3 is a C2. That's correct, that's correct. So that would be, so the picture leading to uh, original AGT would be N1 and phi brains. Uh, N1 would correspond to N1 and phi brains wrapping uh, C2 inside C3. And the corresponding vertex separated algebra is indeed going to be WN algebra. So. And, 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 and what is the toric diagram? That, uh, and the toric diagram is the following. And epsilon parameters? And epsilon parameters are going to show up. They appear as equivalent uh, parameters in the, uh, on, the, on the geometric side. And they are going to be, uh, there will be parameter psi, which is k plus n, and will be equal to the ratio of the equivalent parameters. <coughs> so they act um, equivalently on C2 rotation? Yes, yes, that's, that's right. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And all around there is going to be this extra parameter, which is the ratio of the equivalent parameters. And we are working equivalently with respect to the T2 action. Okay, so I'm going to give you three different definitions. We have strong reasons to believe that uh, they actually give the same algebra. Uh, it's not, it has not been proved. And the first one is the original that we gave with Davide in the paper almost two years, two years ago, based on, a, on this dual perspective that I've already mentioned in the context of geometric angles. Now I can be actually slightly more concrete, right? So I'm going to now tell you what is the vertex operator algebra associated to the to the vertex or this diagram. So from the dual perspective, now I can be more concrete. Uh, this this setup is also a description in terms of n equals four super young mills, where we have a junction of interfaces between various between n equals four super young mills with gauge group n one and two and n three, and by analysis of the boundary condition or the uh, interface conditions along the lines of Gauss and Witten uh, between the between the gauge theory, we were led to the to conjecture the following definition for the uh, for the corresponding vertex separated algebra. So this interface, interfaces in n equals four super young mills lead quite naturally to an ident identification of the vertex operator algebra 
in terms of a quantum Hamiltonian reduction consisting of a Drinfeld Sokor reduction with respect to n phi minus n2 uh, with respect to a principal embedding inside n minus n phi minus n2 diagonal block inside GL n1 slash n3. There's the parameter psi, where the parameter psi, as I mentioned, is the ratio of the equivalent parameters on the on the dual side. And on the side, on the n equals first diagonal side, it is just the gauge coupling or the couple uh, stimulation parameter or whatever, roughly the gauge coupling. And then one needs to take a call set with respect to the remaining uh, diagonal block, which is GLN1 and 2 psi minus 1. I don't have time to describe the details. I just wanted to write down the formula uh, for the people who know the Hamiltonian reductions. I just, um, yeah, can't read this one. It says, it's writing y of n1 and 2 and 3, and then there's square break. What's inside this? What's the symbol inside the square bracket? No, on the, on the left. On the, no, no, on the left. This one? Yeah. Uh, so this is the label of the, uh, this is how we label the. But then there's a letter inside the square psi. bracket. Psi. This is psi. Yeah. Right, and, and what is psi? So psi is either on the on this side on the on the geometric side, it should be the ratio of the equivalent parameters, and on the gauge theory side, it is the couple uh, couple parameter in n equals first of Young Mills. And so, a priori, in, in the kind of general formalism, so somehow, is there a I mean, on what kind of parameters should this vertex operator algebra depend? I mean, can you just start with any calabial threefold with a divisor, or maybe with a toric one? And then they're saying that you have a, a algebra, not just you know, sorry, not an algebra, but an algebra depending in this case on one parameter. So, right. Uh, so I'm not sure how it's going to be if you are not in toric calabial threefolds, and there I don't even know how to be concrete in terms of formulas. I'm restricting to toric calabial threefolds because then I know when I'm uh, I can write down formulas and the, the, the algebras explicitly, and these are always going to depend on this parameter, one parameter psi. I'm pretty sure that. This and if you're using this M theory perspective somehow, can you predict what kind of parameters should get in the picture? Circle? Which circle? No, 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 no. It looks like it's related to, to how non compact this guy is. That's right, that's right, yeah. Yeah, I don't have a good answer for that. And where does supersymmetry come from? Uh, supersymmetry? Well, the I didn't assume any supersymmetry. Well, there's supersymmetry all around. The full configuration preserves. Uh, you can either, either look at it from the dual perspective or, or this perspective, and you just write down the supersymmetry preserved by the uh, by the setup. It is going to be uh, zero comma two. Sorry, zero comma four two dimensional. Uh, supersymmetry or something like that. So four supercharges are going to be preserved and they can do topological twists and most of the things I'm talking about should be actually in some some kind of twist. Okay, so let me give you the second perspective uh, that we came up, came up with by analyzing a character of this vertex of algebra in large and limit. So we can compute vacuum character for an i going to infinity. It turns out that one gets the McMahon function with the following form, which actually turns out to be also a character of an algebra called w1 plus infinity. What do I mean by W1 plus infinity? So you, you only take N1 goes to infinity and the N how It doesn't matter. Uh, the, the character doesn't, so even the character of this algebra has very nice box count interpretation and everything uh, that I don't have time to describe, but it doesn't matter in this case how you take the limit. It will, it will matter in the case of resolved conifold and more complicated diagrams, but in this simplest case it doesn't matter how you take the limit, and if you take the limit you'll always get uh, the same character, the McMahon function. So what do, I, what do I mean by W1 plus infinity? <coughs> I 
mean something slightly different than in most of the literature. So W1 plus infinity for me is an extension of the Virasoro 0 algebra with the uh, stress energy tensor dilabel label as W2 consisting of, of the most uh, Ln that I've written before by fields of conformal weight 1, 3, 4, and so on up to infinity. What I mean by conformal fields of weight, uh, uh, weight i, I mean that they have the commutation relation with the modes of the stress energy tensor. of the following form. So I can now ask a question, something that Gabriel and Gopakumar asked some time ago. What are the possible vertex operator algebras containing such fields? And it turns out the Jacobi identities fix all the, uh, all the OPEs, all the, uh, uh, basically everything, up to two parameters. So the algebra is unique. Up to the parameters lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, subject to the following constraint. Sir, are, are you in the conical case or in the general case? Right now, I'm talking about the simplest uh, C three. Uh, C three with arbitrary and one and two. And, 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 and the limit is it's a vacuum character for m, uh, all m i's go to infinity, which is one of them. Doesn't matter. Uh, one of them could be the one. Take, take, take uh, the limit where only one of them takes, uh, goes to infinity and the two of them are zero. You'll get wn algebras and you send n to infinity, so you'll get obviously the McMahon, McMahon function. And it doesn't matter how you do it. You can, it's going to be always the same. I can actually, because it's kind of fun, right? Uh, so the McMahon function is known to count uh, boxes that, like 3D partitions, boxes that fit into a three-dimensional corner. So we have those boxes, we have, so we, if, we, if we expand this, this character, we get one plus Q plus three Q squared, blah, blah, blah. Where the one corresponds to the empty, empty corner. This other one, corresponds to a single box put in the corner. And this three corresponds to the three ways how, to, how you can put two boxes in the corner. There are two other ways, right? You can stick uh, the other box here or here like from three different sides. And it'll get three and you can continue. And it's kind of fun that it turns out, again, something for which we don't have a proof but we uh, expect it to be, to be true based on some like, examples. Anyway, uh, no, oh yeah, okay. It turns out that the character of this y n1, n2, n3 counts also boxes that fit under a shifted corner that is shifted by n1, n2, n3. So we have this vector shifted by n1, n2, n3, and the character of y n1, n2, n3 counts the boxes that fit under the shifted corner. <coughs> okay. It also turns out that there exists an ideal uh -huh. inside this uh, W1 plus infinity if the parameters lambda are specialized as follows. If this combination equals one. And one can consider quotient with respect to such ideal and recover the algebras y, n1, n2, n3 as such a quotient. Uh, and no. Where is, where is 
Exactly, that's what I'm about to say. We have three parameters subject to this constraint and this extra constraint coming from the, uh, that, requ that is required in order to get the ideal. And we have one extra parameter and the one extra parameter is parameter psi, which is minus lambda two over lambda one. Uh, let me uh, add a remark. It is known, though I don't think it's pro pro proven, uh, that this W1 plus infinity algebra is isomorphic uh, as an associative algebra with the affine Youngian of GL1 hat, where the parameters H1, H2, H3 are roughly uh, one of the lambda, parameters one of the lambda. And the H1, H2, H3, oh, I, I call them epsilon there. This is more or less a definition of the side of the of the, of the left hand side. Of the right hand side. What is definition of right hand uh, side? There's no notion, I mean, a priori there's no definition of young of gel one hat. Why not? This is not cosmology algebra, so we can write down generators and relations. No, people have written down generation relations, like this work of Simbai Luke Luke and. Yeah, but I, mean, I think the original definition is just is just this W one plus infinity, or more or less, is, is, it, is the original definition of the Youngian. I think there is a definition of uh, Youngian for any toroidal algebra by. Used by generators and relations in the right. papers of Hernandez yeah, also relates to that as a procedure of affinization. You can do affinization for any quantum group in particular with a hat. I think for GL1 you have to do it separately, but what maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Ah, uh, for GL1 compared to like simple? Yes. Ah, maybe. Yes. Okay, that's that I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. That's true for what? Okay, so that was the second definition or characterization of the of the algebras, and finally, let me give you give you a free field realization. <coughs> Again, I won't be very concrete, but I'll just tell you that is why n one, n two, n three can can be realized as a subalgebra of a tensor product of n1 plus n2 plus n3 uh, <coughs> uh, Heisenberg algebras, he Heisenberg VOAs generated by JNs with the following commutation relation. <coughs> and I don't have time to uh, give you the definition like properly, so let me just tell you two examples. The first example being this Y002 algebra that we expect to be the W2 algebra, which is the Virazoro times an extra Heisenberg algebra. And one can realize it in as a subalgebra of, of two free bosons by setting this W1 generator to the sum of the two uh, of the two j's and the Virazoro to be up to normalization the following combination where I've, I've, I've introduced j that is j1 minus j2 Yeah, and wherever I write H's, I mean epsilons. Sorry for that.
and so we do know somehow some explicit equations by which this is cut out inside the Heisenberg algebra, like some of like spring operators. Yes, I do. I'm worried that I don't have time to, to discuss, but I do, have, I do have two characterizations. The first one uh, in terms of screening currents based on the work of Fagin and uh, Litvinov and collaborators, uh, and one based on some kind of generalization of mural transformation uh, from our paper with Tomasz Prochaska. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to tell you later. But yeah, we do have explicit formulas, explicit characterizations of these, of these embeddings that I just don't have time to describe. Because I want to say a few words about the gluing and how to define vertex operator algebras associated to more compli complicated toric, uh, toric free faults. And I will illustrate everything, though most of the claims I'm going to tell you can be made much more general. I will illustrate everything on the simplest example of the resolved conic fault. And again, I will give you three definitions as I did in the simplest, uh, simplest case. So based on the dual perspective, one can again give this quantum Hamiltonian reduction definition or the BRST definition, at least in some cases for some, toric, uh, for some, for some divisors. And write down formulas as follows. Now <coughs> we will have to do two dream circle reduction, one with, with respect to n, n1 minus n2, sorry, n4 minus n3 diagonal block, another with respect to n1 minus n2. I can later on tell you also how to read it from the diagram. Sorry, when you write Greenfield Sokolov with an index, what do you mean? So it means that it's a Greenfield Sokolov reduction mm -hmm. with respect to what? With respect to? With respect to the nail pot, uh, uh, with respect to the principal embedding inside uh, n4 minus n3 times n4 minus n3 diagonal block, which means that I'm taking the uh, uh, the n generator to be, so I take So I have this super matrix, uh, n1, n4. I take, let's say, that I want to take the, do the, this dim process reduction with respect to n1 minus n2. So I take n1 minus n2 diagonal block, and I consider the uh, the principal embedding inside this block. And what do you do if n1 minus n2 is greater than? Yeah. Sure, and that's what uh, that's ex that's exactly what I uh, what I mean by saying that in some cases you can define the Dirac circle reduction. The cases when I can define the Dirac circle reduction is when both of the ends on the left and right either decrease or increase. So those are the only only cases where I can write down the. And this is going to be true also for general, uh, more general diagrams, like these linear tree diagrams. Yeah. Okay, so that was the Hamiltonian reduction definition. And in the same way as we did the analysis for the large N character, vacuum character of the uh, of these simple vertex algebra vertices, we can do the large N analysis also here. And conjecture that the vertex separated algebras can be defined as quotients. of some version of W infinity algebra, some infinity algebra that I call W one slash one times infinity rho. That is conjecturally uh, isomorphic to the shifted Youngian of 
gl1 slash 1 hat with shift being the intersection number of the p1 of the resolved conifold with the divisor. In general, there are going to be more shifts, and the shifts are going to be parameterized again by uh, intersection numbers of various p1s inside the tori uh, inside the toric labial freefold with the divisor. And in this case, one can explicitly write it as n4 plus n2 minus n1 minus n3. So that was the second definition. And finally, I will give, tell you also the free federalization. You get this quotient of GL1 one hat, uh, young of GL1, uh, only for, for the conifold um, case, or? That's right. So now I'm talking only about the conifold case. And, and, do you, and in principle, do you have an analog of this definition in a general Tory case, or? Yes. So do you have an analog of this young of GL1? That's right. So if there's the diagrams of the following form, where you have uh, one zeros uh, ending on, on the line from the left and right, and there's n of them on the right, n of them, n of them on, the, on the left. The corresponding Youngian should be shifted Youngian of, that's right. That's the expectation. <coughs> and again, the shifts are going to be given by the intersection number of the divisor with the uh, uh, with the P1. So let me give you the free filtrization. So the free filtrization in, is inspired by the topological vertex where one takes uh, one associate some topological vertices to each, uh, t to each of the trivalent uh, diagrams and extend by some, uh, and sum over some, uh, something associated with internal lines. And uh, the free federalization of the algebras is given by an extension of the product of the two algebras associated with two trivalent, trivalent vertices, which is y and one n2 and 3 times y and 1 and 3 and 4 by some modules or by modules labeled by a lattice labeled by n1 plus n3 which are these these two numbers dimensional lattice and have roughly the following form where j and j uh, uh, is h3 and where this n is the, uh, the lattice vector times a difference between <coughs> the ve vectors of j associated to, uh, to the uh, Heisenberg algebras of the, of the two vertices. There's the uh, J til J's associated to, uh, to the first vertex and J tilde is associated to the, to the second vertex and one just takes this like difference and multiplies it by, by N. Okay, I, I don't have time to, to go to the details again, but uh, this kind of construction is combination of the standard lattice extensions, construction of lattice vertex operator algebras and uh, screening currents techniques. So let me conclude.
So I gave you three characterizations of a class of vertex operator algebras, or sketched three characterizations based on BRST, uh, W infinity, and free filtralization. of these vertex operator algebras, VOAD. And there are indeed many open questions and things that should be done more precisely and properly. So it would be nice to develop fully the, uh, the theory of gluing, to combine fully the, uh, the techniques of the lattice vertex operator algebra extensions and uh, screening currents techniques. There are many open questions in this, in this point. It would be nice to explore properties of these infinite algebras, especially for the, for the, uh, for the diagrams that are not of this simple form. versions of the W infinity. And finally, it would be interesting to find actually or prove that uh, the definitions that I gave you are equivalent. Are there some cases when you can actually, when you can actually do it now? Some cases, well, sure. So for, for example, if you take these WN algebras, uh, all of those are known yeah. to be equivalent, right? Besides that, there of, yeah, there are many other uh, examples that we have worked out, for example. Uh, but what we have done, we have basically worked out only uh, the examples for small numbers of n. So for example, uh, 1, 2, 1, 1 and so on. And maybe there are even some, like, there, there are many people working on vertex operator algebras, and I, I can, I, I expect that there might be some results also for, like, bigger, bigger class of uh, examples. For example, I think it might have been shown, at least to some extent, to, for the following configurations as well, since these are simple cosets, U, GLN, over GL and minus one that have been studied. So it's very likely that there, are, there is some kind of equivalence uh, uh, known for, for like these classes of vertex superior algebras, but I don't know. Okay, and finally there are many possibly interesting applications. For example, prove that these vertex operated algebras are indeed those that come from the, uh, from the action, uh, geometric actions on the equivalent cohomology of moduli spaces. So proof of AGT for necros of spiked instantons. Or possibly use some of the results, something that uh, is being developed by David Gaiato with collaborators in geometric long lens. And possibly many other applications that are hopefully going to show up. So thank you very much. Exactly. That's that, uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. So that's what we discuss uh, in the in the recent recent paper with Jan Yaping and Gufang. And uh, if you take exactly this this configuration, the the cohomology Goha algebra has a quiver description for C3 in terms of the following quiver. 
and we show that it naturally acts on the equivalent cohomology of a uh, frame quiver coming from uh, like, like putting putting in the, the, the divisor and studying like, uh, that has quiver description in terms of the following quiver with potentials and there are ranks n1, n2, n3 and we take So there's a natural action of the cohomological algebra. There are actually two natural actions, one giving rise to raising operators and lowering operators of the affine angle of GL1. And one can then use the, uh, in the standard way of, of Schiffman and Wasserot, for example, one can use the, uh, the same argument, uh, one can use the coproduct of, uh, <coughs> coproduct of the affine angle and the, uh, the simple free field realization uh, of the action of the affine angian on uh, the simple, the simplest ADHM quiver, or the equivalent cohomology of the simplest uh, ADHM quiver, to find free field realization of the of the action of the full affine angian on uh, on the equivalent cohomology of the corresponding moduli space, and one can compare this free field realization with the free field realization of the vertex operator algebras. Uh, that I've sketched definition of. So in this case of C3, in this case of C3, when the Dori Kleber of equality C3, uh, we have a proof that uh, proof of this of this AGT conjecture, and it indeed uh, uses the cohomological algebra in this sense. And it would be nice to generalize it for other Kleber free faults and I have a very basic <coughs> question. So this is work of uh, you know, Fagan and Gukov, mm -hmm. associated with vertex operator algebra to form manifold. So how are these yeah, related? Actually, it was my second question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so firstly, I think in all the examples or most of the examples that they they've been studying, they concentrate only on rank one cases. So uh, the cases where the I mean double algebra also here, right? And okay, and another complaint about uh, their work is that it doesn't seem to have very uh, many concrete, like very concrete uh, predictions. So, yeah, but the, the, the relation is. The start with the original perspective. Right? Yeah, the relation is obvious, yeah. absolutely. So, 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 so yeah, it's absolutely. using by, by different procedures, right? I mean, like mm -hmm. the kind of. Yeah, but like motivation is, di is different, but but still the, the well, algebra seem to be a the physics motivation is similar, I would say, or basically similar, the but not the same. But well, kind of because they are also wrapping in five brains on. Yes. When when Ooh. these form are mm -hmm. it's exactly the setting of Grukov and the uh, no, but sorry, but I don't so so here associated to a divisor in Calabi yes. L threefold, and they're associated to a four manifold. Yeah, there's there sure sure sure. Yeah, so in the case when uh, their manifold, so there's, an, there's clearly, clearly an overlap of our setup and their setup. Uh, if you consider a manifold that can be embedded inside the Riccoli of freefold or inside the Calabi of freefold, uh, then it should fit within our framework. Sure. On the other hand... You mean, uh, sorry, you can just repeat, so, so it, I mean, if your four manifold is your divisor, is, is that what you want? Yes. yes. But then right. you're saying that it's independent of the ambient but also in that I mean, setup you actually should start not with a four manifold but with a four manifold and basically a gauge group right I mean which can be GLM if you want but somehow you, sure. you need some so it's a four manifold plus additional data and here just start with a divisor so okay. here we also have ends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you could have ends, but it could be any divisor, right? I mean, uh, just you could have multiplicity one or something. Well, anyway. well, yes, yeah, so there clearly is an overlap, just. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll ask, uh, uh, do you see a connection to, sh to Youngians, to find Youngians away from Gilden for AD series? Or everything was uh, like GLN. Well, everything here was GLN, but also 
the reason is that I don't have good understanding how like what happens for more complicated PQ webs. Basically, all the all the all the PQ webs that I've been considering in examples, or most of them, are of the following form. Once we start considering more complicated PQ webs, it's likely that other uh, young games might appear. Let me give you one example. Uh, it's actually relevant to this geometric long lens program. If you consider the following diagram, mm -hmm. that is indeed not of this type, uh, the corresponding vertex operator algebra turns out to be a uh, cut smoothie algebra uh, based on this. I think it's, it's labeled as d21, comma, uh, comma minus psi at level one, uh, exceptional super Lie algebra. That's right. So you can get many interesting objects once you start considering more complicated gluings, but I don't know how to treat them at the moment or how to say something interesting. But possibly there are there. Do we have any more questions for the speaker? Okay, if not, I guess let's thank Miro. Thank you.